Today we're going to be talking about pressure vessels. And uh, a pressure vessel is a good thing for us to study. <coughs> Excuse me. A pressure vessel is a good application for us to study because it's it uses principles of plane stress as well as triaxial stress. So today we're going to be learning about two kinds of pressure vessels. The first thing we're going to be learning about is what's called a spherical spherical pressure vessel. Right, so you have some perfect sphere and we're going to be looking at a little element here, stress element, and the inside of the pressure vessel is pressurized with what's called gauge pressure. Gauge pressure is the difference between the pressure inside an object and atmospheric pressure. And we're going to assume that it's always positive, the gauge pressure. So the pressure inside the pressure vessel is higher than the atmospheric pressure. Now to determine the stress state, we do some simple statics procedures. I'll let you look at my course notes to see the details there. Uh, the result of the process of statics gives us that sigma sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 is equal to P R over 2T where this R here is the inner radius and then this is the thickness of the pressure vessel. Okay, so if we call this sigma 1, in fact, we can just call everything sigma, right? Because they're all the same. So in other words, the pressure is the same in all directions. And so this PR over 2T uh, is the pressure kind of in the skin. If we're, th if we're on the outer surface, if we're on the outer surface, then we assume that sigma, we'll call this N, it's the stress acting normal to the surface of the sphere, sigma N is equal to zero. If we're on the inner surface, then sigma n is equal to the negative of the gauge pressure. Okay, so the outer surface, sigma n is zero, and sigma one equal to sigma two equal to p r over two t. And on the inner surface, it's the same here, sigma one is equal to sigma two equal to P R over 2 T. Okay, so that fully specifies the stress behavior of a spherical pressure vessel. And what you'll notice, since sigma 1 and sigma 2 are the same, this is a classic example of what we call a Moore's point. So Moore's circle collapses down to a point, and every rotation is a principal rotation. So these are the principal stresses, sigma 1 and sigma 2. In the case of the stress on the outer surface of the pressure vessel, since, since sigma n is equal to 0, and sigma 1 and sigma 2 are not equal to 0, this is an example of plane stress. Okay, this is plane stress, or more specifically we call it biaxial stress. In this case, since sigma 1 and sigma 2 are non-zero and sigma n is non-zero, this is a case of triaxial stress. Okay, and so once you know the given stress state, you can detach yourself from the application of it being a spherical pressure vessel and simply analyze for maxes and mins using 
Mohr's circle in the case of plane stress or the three Mohr's circle approach for triaxial stress. And then you can analyze the complete behavior of a spherical pressure vessel. Okay, now for a cylindrical pressure vessel, it's very, very similar with one small change. So we have a cylindrical pressure vessel now. And in this case, we're going to have the following. We've got a cylinder. There's our cylinder. We're going to assume it has some end caps on it, right? It's kind of like it looks like a pill. And we're going to be measuring the stress a distance away from the end caps because, in fact, there's an abrupt change in the stress conditions moving from the cylindrical portion into the spherical cap. So the derivations that we're doing today only have to do with the stress state away from the end caps. So we don't want to deal with any singularities in stress. Okay, so we'll call this sigma 1, sigma 2. And again, doing simple statics procedure. Uh, we learn that sigma 1 is equal to P R over T and sigma 2 is P R over 2 T. Okay, so in this case they're not, it's just slightly different. This is just twice what we had for in the spherical case and this is the same as the spherical case. And the conditions on the inner and outer surface, let's call it sigma n, again is zero for the outer surface, and sigma n is equal to negative p for the inner surface. So again, we have biaxial stress for the outer surface, or plane stress, and we have a triaxial stress condition on the inner surface. And so you can use those assumptions that of those stress states and use more circle to determine maxes and men's.